We have in the past covered the fascinating legends and indeed recovered artifacts that have been found over the years within the Ecuadorian cave system, known locally as Cueva de los Tayos. The legends of the cave nearly all surround hidden treasures of lost ancient and giant civilizations, including the posit of an ancient yet inexplicable library room made entirely from a curious metallic formula. With caves with an intrigue strong enough to even attract the attention of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, one began to wonder whether these legends be true. And when you bring Father Crespi's collection into the fold, the flurry of interest surrounding these legends, and indeed the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, all become easily explainable via such motives of discovery. Father Crespi, as the title would suggest, was a religious man and one who was highly philanthropic and also incredibly interested in the artifacts of antiquity. And fortunately for him and us, the location in which he lived was steeped in lost ancient artifacts, all just waiting to be recovered. Father Crespi was a man of modest wealth, and in return for curious artifacts, often found within the Taos cave, even reported to have given food in return for clear forgeries, offered by hungry individuals, although he would offer more and often money respective of the artifact's clearly historical value. This allowed Father Crespi to gather a literal hoard of authentic ancient artifacts, many clearly from this long claim to exist metallic library, his collection full of metallic plates of unknown writings and other fascinating metallic artifacts. The reason for our revisiting of these caves and indeed the fascinating character that was Father Crespi, is our recent perusing of new information released on the cave, deliberately ignoring all aforementioned facts, including the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, in particular at entrances, as if reinforced with enormous ancient lintels. Unfortunately, all that remains of Father Crespi's collection that can be confirmed as 100% his and authentic, now only exist within the photos taken of him with his collection prior to his death, whereas the hoard of artifacts was ransacked and many replaced with poor quality forgeries. Thus, it is a mystery, and we believe conspiracy to conceal a lost history, which we find incredibly frustrating. In our previous video, we presented a hypothesis, a theory believed by many, one of a now lost or possibly hidden race of ancient giants. Surprisingly, however, recently, although China is seen as an infamously secretive country with many tombs and ancient pyramids of gargantuan proportions rarely aerial photographed, let alone explored, it seems that they have, at last, stolen the archaeological world stage with the announcement of a discovery which we may relish, but those whom these remains rest just beyond the clutches of, we would presume rather get a hold of themselves to study and then store away in hidden archives, far from public view, an ongoing effort we have personally read of, dating back to the early 1900s. An ancient graveyard, complete with over 500 giant human remains, has not only been accidentally discovered, but publicly exhumed and most crucial of all, photographed for all the world to see within China. Could this be a retaliatory move with other motives at play? If our previously mentioned theory is true, it would enable man to explain the inexplicably, seemingly impossible size of many of the world's megaliths, and indeed still standing megalithic structures of the world. How a pyramidal, treasury, and many other ancient architectures, lintels, and top stones, often weighing many hundreds of tons, were not only transported from quarries many hundreds of miles, but placed aloft many meters with seeming ease. Furthermore, we have in the past not only postulated and have also presented reams of witness testimony and photographic cooperation 
still to be found in newspaper archives across the Western world, describing these finds, but also the Smithsonian's efficiency in not only dealing with the matter, but disappearance of any further reporting, thus expiration. This also supporting the reason for lost pieces of the puzzle, which is inhibiting us from unlocking the secrets to the site's construction. Perhaps we may never know the true motivations for such a controversial exposure in China. But nonetheless, the resulting fallout of proof presented for our community is a step closer to the truth the untangling of a tired and tangled web of lies in which many have weaved. For at the bottom of Pandora's box, there is always hope. The awe-inspiring ancient city of Hegra, also known as Madain Saleh, close sister of the equally astonishing and cinematically famous ancient site of Petra, is now finally open to the public able to go and investigate for themselves. We have covered this site, and indeed the gigantic scale of the rock-cut temples, the claimed tombs, and tall doorways to enter these sites. Furthermore, we have covered uncanny similarities found upon rare, unfinished areas of these once astonishingly precisely cut solid rock ruins. In addition to the enormous scale of the stone-cut buildings, and the absence of doorsteps, which would have enabled the now average-sized human claimed as having created them, no chance of entering them with ease. This giving credence to the many theories pertaining to these gigantic structures, along with their gigantic scales and their enormous megalithic counterparts found at other sites, linked to by cutting marks previously mentioned, were instead constructed by an ancient, now lost race far larger than any of today, one capable of these incredible ancient feats. Could these structures have instead of, as so many, as indeed we have postulated, not actually built by ancient man, but were actually made by ancient giants? Not only with the muscular ability to have once lifted such enormous stones into position, such as that of the enormous megalithic stones incorporated into the Great Pyramids of Giza, found within the temples of Baalbek, Gornyashoria, but also almost globally? Could this explain how they were once able to liberate these giant stones from the quarries and bedrocks selected almost many miles from where they were eventually placed with seeming ease? How they were somehow transported, enormous stones high atop mountains, assembling them into the remarkably precise laid polygonal masonry that now drenches the tops of Peruvian peaks, how they once raised the ancient obelisk of Aswan. But I digress. Many have now conceded that the methodology of the Great Pyramids of Giza construction continues to be an enigma in regards to a modern explanation as to how the modern man accomplished such feats. Could this mystery be linked to the cover-up in which many have claimed, and we ourselves encountered, in regard to the remains of this possibly lost civilization, smothered by the Smithsonian, one that we would now perceive as ancient giants? It is a hypothesis which would indeed be a fitting explanation for these mysteries and a cover-up, the stifling of a reason for their continued inexplicability to modern explanation. It is a theory which we find incredibly intriguing. There are many sites in the modern world which are overlooked by mainstream academia, some due to their inexplicable nature, and others due to the controversial nature of the discoveries made during initial investigations. One such site is known as the Dover Mound, a large earthwork located in the state of Kentucky, a site which researchers have attributed to Native Americans, now largely believed to have been a burial ground this due to the 50 or so cremations which have been identified within the mound. Specifically attributed to a group known as the Adena people, however one skeleton in particular located at the site escapes modern understanding. A seven-foot-tall giant skeleton of what is claimed as an Adena man was discovered. What was more interesting than his height, however, was his abnormally elongated head 
and disproportionately large torso in relation to his legs. This is not a unique find, however. Native American burial sites all over America have produced similar remains, yet their origins lack any logical explanation. In Ohio, for example, similar remains were found of incredibly tall men with elongated heads and disproportionately large torsos. The remains were thought to have been of extraterrestrial, but scientific investigation claims to have confirmed these are definitely human remains. Archaeologists are still continuing to find similar remains at Native American burial mounds all over the country, and indeed globally. So the possibility that these remains are instead the remnants of a once global, now lost civilization is still a topic of debate, one which has compelling supporting arguments. One additional site in particular was found in New York. An archaeological dig made in 1971 at a Native American burial ground unearthed more than 200 giant skeletons, some of which measured 9 feet in height. It was estimated at the time that the remains could have been up to 9,000 years old. Yet, predictably, the remains, although widely reported in the media, have subsequently vanished. Were these remains left by a now lost, yet once global civilization? We find their discovery all over the states, and indeed worldwide, highly compelling.